Welcome to CivilNet. My guest today is Serdar Korucu. He is a journalist and author who is here in Yerevan from Istanbul. Serdar, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, as I mentioned in the opening, you are a journalist and an author, and you wrote a book with uh, Aris Nalce of Image TV in Istanbul called 1915, 50 years before 2015, and 50 years after 1915. Uh, it's a very interesting book because 1965 was really a critical moment, I think, in the history of the uh, Armenian nation because it was a real awakening here in Soviet Armenia and in the diaspora. Armenian communities became more politicized and they began demanding recognition uh, for the first genocide of the 20th century. Uh, interestingly, in Soviet Armenia in those days, they were also demanding their lands back, which is really quite astounding taking into consideration the regime under which they were living at the time. Uh, what was the motivation for this book now? Uh, because everybody in Turkey talks about uh, Armenian genocide's anniversary uh, next for right, next the centennial, year. Right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, now everybody uh, has a question marks about a genocide, uh, genocide's anniversary. What will happen uh, in Turkey, in Europe, and also in US? Maybe US recognize or not? And mm -hmm. everybody thinks about a lot of things. And we want to say, uh, come on, uh, this is just anniversary. Yeah, this is important, but in 1965, there is a first anniversary, uh, which is um, uh, first awakeness. Mm -hmm. And we want to say, look up. Uh, first, you can uh, look to past. Uh, what will happen in uh, 2015? So by that, you're saying that nothing much is going to happen in 2015, in your opinion? Uh, actually, I'm. it's not a big deal. Yeah, it's... Uh, symbolically, yes, important, mm -hmm. but I don't believe in uh, Turkey step forward or U.S. recognized or something happened. I don't think so. Yeah, it's uh, symbolically so important, but politically, it's just a year, I think. Like any other year that we yeah, would commemorate yeah, yeah, the genocide. Yeah. Yeah, but a lot of importance has been given to the centennial um, from the Armenians, from Turkey, from Turks, from different circles in Turkey. So you think there's no expectation. On April 23, uh, at the time, uh, Prime Minister Erdogan uh, issued a letter, an open letter to the Armenians. Um, some in Turkey, I was there at the time, I was there in Turkey when, when he issued that letter, and many uh, Turks and some Armenians were cautiously optimistic, saying that this is the first time that uh, a prime minister, a leading figure uh, in the, of the Republic of Turkey, uh, has actually talked about those events publicly. Is that not a symbol of what might come? Actually, it's, they are optimistic because um, Turkish Republic's first letter about this issue. Mm -hmm. So maybe they have a little right about it. Because in first time in Turkish Republic, yeah, there's a uh, first, first statement. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is right. But uh, in this book, for example, you can see another optimistic people mm -hmm. in Turkey. In, Armenian uh, society also. For example, in uh, 1965, in First Awakeness, mm -hmm. uh, some part of uh, Armenian in Turkey mm -hmm. uh, says, oh, come on, there isn't, yeah, we had bad times in Turkey. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, uh, it's just passed over and uh, we are a uh, citizen of Turkish Republic and uh, we have no problem with this state and just forget it. Yeah, there is a big and bad massacres, but uh, this is not only one way, mm -hmm. this is two ways. So uh, we can get over it, mm -hmm. they say. So it, it's similar, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, some parts of society is always some optimistic, but mm -hmm. actually not only optimistic. Do, yeah. Is it because, do you think that, um, maybe this is a, a very sort of, um, primitive question. Is it because Turkish society is not ready for it? Do you think if Turkish society had been ready for it, the leadership would have perhaps thought about taking steps to end this 100-year-old stalemate that we have? 
Uh, actually, I think uh, maybe I'm not optimistic, but uh, <laughs> Turkish uh, people never can be uh, ready for it because uh, this is a huge crime. This is a huge humanity crime, and uh, they can't say yes, we did it, and we are so sorry. It's so fragile, and it's so big guilty, and I don't know how can they uh, commit it, how can they admit it, because, for example, Germans admit genocide because they uh, they are uh, seized. Uh, all captured mm -hmm. and uh, and then international laws came to Germany and then they forced to uh, so do, is it going to be a, a moment where Turkey will be forced to do it uh, actually there is no power to force Turkey to admit mm -hmm. uh, Armenian genocide because uh, Turkish Republic if you see the history of Turkish Republic uh, it's based by uh, Armenian genocide. Mm -hmm. For example, if you go to Malatya or Antep, or this is Western Armenian mm -hmm. cities, uh, you can see government uh, buildings are all uh, old Armenian buildings. So how can they say this uh, yeah. to their people? How can they say, okay, we have a big crime and we get uh, Holocaust too? Armenian people, mm -hmm. how can they say? But what's the answer, Serdar? Where do we go? How, how do we continue living side by side with closed borders, with no diplomatic relations, with this eternal, I don't know, this, this horrible event, this crime hanging over the heads of both peoples? Actually, I don't know because this is a uh, huge problem. And one part, I think, Armenians, feels, how can I say, this is so big, uh, uh, lost, sure. they, they lost a lot of things. It's a personal a and it's things. a collective and loss. Yeah, 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 and I, I can understand uh, how they feel because uh, they lost their uh, parents, they lost their uh, lands, and they lost their cultures, and big culture, and I can't imagine actually how can they feel. Okay, I understood this, but I understood also Turks because uh, a lot of them, uh, government say, say to them uh, there is no genocide, this is imperialist lie, mm -hmm. and uh, we have some uh, wars in the uh, First world, world War, and uh, we uh, war with them, sure. and them, uh, they believe in it. But now, some Turks and Kurds uh, may be enlightened, but it's not enough for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think only solution, uh, dialogue, but dialogue with societies, mm -hmm. because governments can't do anything, because they have only, uh, they think only money, or they think only politics, and blah, blah, only society can change. I'm going to ask you a very provocative question, and you can choose to answer it or not. As a, as a citizen of Turkey, as a Turk, as somebody who obviously um, has studied uh, the Armenian Genocide as a journalist who writes about it. You also write articles for Agos uh, and other papers, I presume. What are you willing to give up if Turkey was to acknowledge the Armenian Genocide? As a, as a citizen of Turkey, what are you willing? Are you willing to give up money, lands? Is it acknowledgement? Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Do you know what I, I mean, these are questions that we don't ask one another. We don't oftentimes we have this internal discussion as Armenians of what it is that we want. Uh, one Armenian will say, the recognition is good enough for me. One Ar Armenian will say, no, I want the Treaty of Sever borders. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Everybody can but say everybody, everything. Yeah, but I mean, at the end of the day, there's something to give up. There's something to, to give up. What are you willing? For example, for me, yeah. just for me. Sure, sure. Just for me. I think always uh, recognition is not enough for me. Because they lost everything. They lost lands, they lost um, histories and cultures and blah, sure. blah, a lot of things. Money is not enough also 
what can you say if you if I kill your father and mother and then if I pay, if pay, I pay for okay. it, uh, you can't you can't it, it's not enough for uh, but how can it be I don't know for example uh, Germany and Israel yeah they recognize uh, the genocide yeah they pay for it but again uh, Jewish people never forget never forget this and maybe they forgive because uh, young Germans have no guilty about sure. it yeah they uh, understood what happens uh, maybe they forgive maybe in Turkey also if they recognize and maybe in dialogues I don't know what will happen land or uh, money or blah blah uh, I think this is fragile it because, is it is because that's why I said it's a very yeah, provocative yeah, 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 question yeah, 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 yeah. I don't expect you to to have a solution I think that yeah. this is part of that dialogue you were talking but about for example uh, I want uh, Western Armenian people in their homes I want to see this mm -hmm. For example, I want to see um, one day, I hope, in Malatya, uh, there, lives in, uh, there will be, live in uh, sure, the, Armenian the descendants people. descendants to return Antar. back to their roots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want, I, I want to see this. But how can it be? I don't know. But I hope one day it will be. Well, Serdar, I really thank you for being very honest and... I would say very courageous because I know how difficult it is to be so forthright in, in, in your country, in a region that oftentimes doesn't want to hear the truth or personal opinion. So thank you for the book. Uh, thank you for being our guest. I hope we continue our conversations so that we become better acquainted with one another and with what we expect from each other as well. So thank you. Thank you. I'd like to remind our viewers that my guest was Serdar Koruchu. He is a journalist and writer from Istanbul. Stay with Civil Man. <laughs>